if you're listening to this podcast, the chances are quite big that you're creative, that you love all things art, design, and that you want to grow your skills and build some structure around your creativity in order to see more success. But let me ask you this. What if failure was no longer an option? It was simply no longer possible. What would you be doing differently? What would you be doing right now? Fear is such a cruel master, yet so many of us limit ourselves by those phantom fears, doubts and arguments, all keeping us from stepping out to take bigger, bolder steps. We choose the safe zone, that place where those voices of what ifs, couldn'ts, shouldn'ts are mere whispers. The what if failure was no longer possible and you were guaranteed success is a powerful question, one I regularly ask the artists I coach during our art coaching sessions. Aspiring artists say they would take their creativity more seriously and those artists that have been creating for a while say they would be connecting with galleries, talking with collectors and taking far bolder steps in their art. And yes, yes, I know we don't live in a perfect world and that our art path doesn't always take us where we want to go. However, there's such freedom when we start to face those limiting fears. Getting into the right headspace is so important if you want to build a sustainable art career. Adopting a positive mindset so that you can move forward towards more artistic success, whatever success looks like for you. Having the confidence to create more, to connect more and invariably sell more. It really is a myth that this is just going to happen. You don't wake up one morning and feel totally different ready to take on the world. Your choices directly reflect the level of your confidence. And the good news is that you can take steps to cultivate a confident artist's heart. Many artists simply don't reach their creative potential because they lack a plan. They don't take intentional steps. But Sonia, I just want to make my art. I hear that all too often. I get it. But people won't just accidentally find your art. Your skill won't just magically improve. Just like anything else, you need to do the work. Setting up structures around your creativity so that you can start to grow and see your creativity turn into a revenue stream. Building that art career that you are happy about. One that gives you energy and fulfillment takes intentional steps. If you're wanting to take bolder steps and move your creativity center stage, setting up those structures so that you can make your art and actually get paid for it, then I have just the class for you. Join me for my new free masterclass, Crafting an Art Career You Love, Three Smart Steps Towards More Artistic Success. This masterclass is for you if you don't want to settle for a life limited by those what ifs and you're ready to step out of that comfort zone and move towards more creative freedom so that you can live your creative best. In this free masterclass, I'm breaking down those steps that you can take to set up smart structures around your creativity so that you can maximize your efforts and see a fair return. The content of this masterclass is real. It's practical and you can start to implement it right away. You'll learn the surprisingly simple steps smart artists are taking to turn their creativity into a meaningful art career. I'll teach you three practical steps that you can start to implement right away so that you can craft an art career that you love. I'll share why so few artists actually see success and struggle to make a living from their art and what we can learn from it. And yes, I'll show you what you need to stop doing in your art business so that you can start to create a profitable, recurrable revenue stream. This is a live training and comes with an extensive PDF workbook, which you'll get after the training. If you're an artist, creator and maker motivated to turn your creativity into recurrable revenue streams, you can definitely register for this masterclass and set up your art career for more artistic success and so that you can get back into your studio and start to make your art head over to www.sonyasmallhair.com forward slash masterclass
Many artists starting out on their own, venturing out to start their own businesses, really struggle in this area. And they find it a challenge to find their feet and navigate through the periods of transition where their creativity used to be for fun. Without pressure, now they are facing all kinds of decisions, all kinds of deadlines and complicated dynamics they've never had to consider before. My name is Sonia Small here. I'm an artist, an art coach and a course creator. When I graduated from the Art Academy, I had learned how to paint and how to draw, but I had no idea how to earn a living with my creativity. I was not prepared for the life as a working artist. This often left me quite frustrated, sometimes on the verge of calling it quits, throwing away my brushes and giving it all up. But I'm so glad I didn't. After many failed attempts and valuable lessons learned, I've discovered ways to turn my creative dream of being a working artist into a reality, now giving me the freedom to live the life I love. I created the Help I Am Artist podcast because no matter where you are on your journey, whether you're just starting out or maybe you've been a working artist for a while, you too can take steps to turn your creative passions into a meaningful, sustainable profession. The Help I Am Artist podcast is filled with fresh inspiration, step-by-step practical insights and interviews with artists who are experts in their field. If you're a smart artist or one in the making who is looking for new and exciting ways to get your art out of your studio and into the hands and hearts of an audience that's appreciative and willing to pay its worth, then you're in the right place. Happy listening. In this episode, I want to talk about that exciting transition, that exciting moment when you decide that you want to take your creativity, that what you're doing as a hobby, and start turning it into a profession, something that you can actually earn your living from. So this is what we're going to be talking about and looking at, and this is not something that's just going to happen. It's something that you can prepare for. The more that you can prepare for it, the easier that transition will be. It's usually a whole process that you have to set into motion to make the transition of turning your creativity into a revenue stream, into a business that becomes more than just a hobby. Many artists starting out on their own, venturing out to start their own businesses, really struggle in this area. And they find it a challenge to find their feet and navigate through the periods of transition where their creativity used to be for fun. Without pressure, now (laughs) they are facing all kinds of decisions, all kinds of deadlines and complicated dynamics they've never had to consider before. Maybe you can relate now that you're starting out on your own. Or maybe you've been a working artist for a while. And that transition can be tricky, even many years down the road. It can be overwhelming and intimidating and really keep you from making bold moves. So understanding the difference between creating as a hobby and making art as a profession is important if you want to move forward with confidence and with clarity and with clear goals. Can you remember when you started creating, when you first discovered what you loved about making and creating and the joy of using your hands and creating something? What motivated you? What made you look forward to those moments that you could whip out your art supplies and get started to make, to create, to draw, to design? Art is something that you did for relaxation or maybe you did as a child or at school or doing vacations. Creating gives you a sense of fulfillment, a feeling of accomplishment and such a deep pleasure doing something meaningful and making something with your hands. Maybe you follow an art class or you've attended a workshop where you spend many hours creating and learning with other students in a relaxed and uplifting environment. Your friends love your work and they regularly tell you how they enjoy your art and how much it means to them. Maybe they've even asked you to paint something for them as a gift. And if you're lucky enough, they've paid you for it. If you look at the word hobby, in the dictionary, then you'll find the description that sounds something like this. An activity done 
regularly in one's leisure or in time of pleasure. Now that's a great description. Making and creating as a hobby with no strings attached. For leisure and for pleasure, it's all part of making art as your hobby. When you feel like it, when you're ready and you just are up to it to pick up that brush, to pick up those scissors, to pick up your art supplies, your camera, your piece of clay, whenever you have the urge to create. There are no clients, there are no peering eyes or people looking over your shoulder, judging your work or deadlines that you have to adhere to. Your creativity is fun and free. When you start to make that transition, turning that creativity into a profession, turning your art into a job, that dynamic starts to change. Now let's look what the dictionary says about being a professional. It's a paid occupation that involves prolonged training or a formal qualification. And the word entrepreneur, which is directly connected with the professional, is someone who sets up a business taking on financial risks in the hope of profit. Now that sounds like a whole bunch more work than having and doing something for pleasure and for leisure. The big difference between making art as a hobby and creating as a profession that there's now an exchange that will take place. And usually it's in the form of money. You can make an art piece, whether on commission or you sell it in your online shop. You are offering value. You are offering a product. You are making art. And in exchange for this value, for your art and for your product, the exchange is usually money. And this is important if you want to keep your business healthy. You need money. There needs to be not only one value exchange, one earning. You need to find ways to create continue flows of revenue so that your business can be sustainable. This value exchange creates expectancy from you and from your clients. And this can add extra pressure, pressure that you've never felt before when you're creating art as a hobby. In order to navigate the transition of making your art, your business, you need to get into the right headspace. How you think and the words that come out of your mouth and how you behave will influence your business success. Here are eight things you need to consider when making the crossover from making art as a hobby to making art as your job. Number one is stepping out into that space. It's time to see yourself as that successful working artist. It's time to take yourself seriously. If this is difficult for you to imagine, then take a look at the lives and works of other creative entrepreneurs. Do a Google search. Have a look online at artists that you admire. Check out their websites, scroll through their feeds and start to see yourself as that successful working artist. Because if you take yourself seriously, others will do so too. And watch your words, those words that come out of your mouth. Start to act and talk like a working professional artist. Now that may seem a little abstract, a little bit out there, but the words that you speak are powerful. So no more negativity about how artists can't make any money or how art is not really a real job and how artists aren't really that important. When somebody asks you what you do, you can say, I'm an artist without blushing, looking down or making excuses. So number one is getting into that right headspace. Number two is about setting up some kind of routine around your creativity. As a hobby, you made your art and your creativity when you felt like it. But as a working artist, you need to make a plan and you need to be intentional about when you're creating and make it part of your schedule. Setting up a solid art routine is crucial in order to make your art on a consistent basis. So how can you set up a routine around your creativity? Do you need to get a planner and literally mark it on your schedule? Do you need to find people that can help you be accountable? Do you need to maybe work less at your day job so that you can accommodate and make time free? Make choices, different choices so that you can accommodate your creativity. Give it some thought how you can start to accommodate, start to create more time so that you can get the work done. Because without your art, there's no artist and there's no art life. Number three, for making that transition to becoming that professional working artist. 
Your business as an artist is built on inspiration. Inspiration that comes and starts with you. And you need to set up systems in place that you can make and produce your work no matter what. No matter what the circumstances. Remember, you're not going to just make your work when you feel like it. You need to find a place that you can have a flow in your creativity so that you can make it whether you're feeling inspired or not. And this is something you can practice and develop over time and give yourself the opportunity to make and create so that you can deliver the goods even when you're not feeling it. Number four, when creativity was your hobby, you had the luxury to do all kinds of creative expressions and try different techniques. Now I'm all for playing and experimenting and this is an important part of the creative process. But if you want to build an art career, you need to focus. And that's number four, to narrow down your focus and to broaden what you do well. You need to make decisions. You need to get clear about what you're doing, who you are as an artist, why you're making your art and start developing your own body of work, your own signature style so that people can start recognizing you. So it's clear for them what you're doing and why you're doing it. Number five, when you step out into the professional art space, all your decisions have consequences. Having clear goals and plans are important to steer your business where you want it to go. Your decisions and your choices should be carefully weighed and made intentionally. You need to develop some kind of filter to what you're going to say yes to and what you're going to say no to. What motivates you to choose one or not the other? What motivates you to do one project or not another project? As you grow and become more successful, you'll have all kinds of opportunities coming your way. People that want to collaborate with you, they want to work with you, and there'll be many things to consider. So how are you going to make a decision that'll be best for your business and help you to move forward? You need to place those filters to help you decide and help you stay on track. Have a clear idea of what art success looks like for you. Are you motivated by earning a revenue? Are you motivated by the process? Does it inspire you when you finish a project? Or are you happy with that moment that art connects you with another person? Or is it the fact that you're running a business that excites you? We all have different success factors. We all have different ideas of what we'd like to see in our careers. Become really clear about what's important to you so that you can stay on track and become that happy working artist. Number six, being a working artist is not all fun and games. It's not all just doing what you want to do and making your art. You are running a business. You have to see yourself as an entrepreneur. And this is a lot of work. There are a lot of moving parts that you need to consider. Often there are many balls that you need to juggle. You are usually a self-solo entrepreneur. So you have to not only make your art, you're responsible for how you're communicating your art, connecting with potential collectors, how are you are photographing your art, how are you going to showcase your art, setting up art shows. All the nuts and bolts start and end with you. So that asks a lot of energy. And number six is all about guarding your energy. This energy that you need to build your art business. Building a sustainable system around your creativity. It costs a lot. And you need to pace yourself. You're not running a business just for a whim or for a moment. It's a lifetime commitment. You're in it for the long run. You want to spend years making your art and turning it into some kind of revenue stream. You want to have a sustainable, healthy business that will last a long time. Now you carry your inspiration in you. The creativity that you have and express comes from the inside of you. It's a process that takes 24-7. And it's sometimes difficult to switch off that switch. Just flip that switch and say, okay, now I'm not going to be an artist. Impossible. I don't know about you. <laughs> I haven't found that switch. But you need to set up healthy boundaries. Take steps to take care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally. If you don't watch yourself, you'll be heading straight into a burnout and you won't be able to make your art. And that will put your business and your art at risk. So knowing your limitations and having that vitality and energy is important if you want to step out and to be that creative professional. 
and I'd love to tell you that your creative career will be all smooth sailing, but it's not true. You'll see many ebbs and flows. There'll be seasons of great abundance and there will be seasons when you'll find yourself lacking. You'll need to build up buffers, financial buffers, energy buffers, inspiration buffers, project buffers, so that you can anticipate and move with the ebb and flow of your career. You need to learn to deal with money, setting up a savings plan and make sound investments as this is all part of being that professional working artist. Identify the areas that you need help and ask for help. Take a course, read a book, ask a friend, but get skill in areas that you need so that you can run a healthy business. Number seven is all about making wise investments. You're making many investments when you're starting out, taking your creativity from the hobby to being a professional artist. First and foremost, it's the investment of your time. If you don't invest time in your art career, you'll never make the art. You'll never have anything to sell or offer your art audience and your business will suffer. Your art career needs time to grow. It's a slow and steady process. Your art career is not a quick fix. It's a slow process of growth, just like a plant. You don't see it growing, but if you look a few days later, that plant has grown. You need to nurture and take care of your business, take care of your creativity, of your artist's heart. Besides time, there are also many other investments that you need to consider. You need to invest money, for example, in supplies, or maybe you're hiring a workspace. Your art needs to be framed. You need a budget to be able to promote what you're doing. And then you need to pay taxes. And I'm so happy that there are people out there that just love to work with numbers. So if necessary, hire an accountant to file your tax papers. And think ahead. Maybe you need to set up a savings plan for your pension. Start making a list of all those moving parts that you need to step out to take your creativity, building those structures so that you can start to build an income around those things that you're creating. Being an artist is exciting. It's a wonderful privilege and an amazing profession. But it's also a profession that you never can say I've arrived. I've learned it all. I know it all. I've reached the pinnacle of my success. As artists, we're always growing and always learning. And we need to have that attitude, investing in our education, taking courses, honing our crafts, taking time to invest, to understand technology so that you know how your website works, how social media works so that you can use it to communicate your art. So there are many things that you need to consider because when you're building your business, you need to make those investments. You need to make choices of how you're going to invest your money, how you're going to invest your time and how you're going to invest your learning. It's all part of being and growing as an entrepreneur. And then the final step to consider is managing your expectations. Maybe you're an artist and a creator who loves to aim for the stars. You have big goals and a big vision. Or maybe you've set your sights on a more safe and controlled path. It's crucial to find a balance. There'll be new expectations and all kinds of pressures and you'll have to learn to manage your stress. You have to build up some kind of resilience and find your way to deal with deadlines. Many artists starting out on their own, setting up businesses around their creativity, struggle in this period of transition. It's a totally different mindset when you're making art as a hobby or when you're setting out to build an art career. It's a totally different way of life. You need to give yourself some space and some time to ease into it. Maybe you still have a day job. Don't give that day job up too quickly because immediately you'll feel the pressure that you need to generate an income with your art to sustain yourself. And maybe that transition will take a few years, each year working less hours so that you can spend more time on your creativity, that you can build up a structure, that you can build up routine. If you're serious about your art and you want to start building a business around your creativity, make a plan. Make a multi-year plan, maybe for three years, and get out your schedule and start making deadlines when you're going to be doing what. What skills do you need to learn with your art or maybe with some kind of technology for your website or that you need to connect with a bookkeeper, talk to other artists that have made the transition and start making a checklist 
Start writing down all those ingredients that you need to take that bold step so that you're not just bungee jumping and diving into a deep hole, but that you are prepared so that it becomes a gentle transition so that you keep your joy because that's why you want to do this. Creativity brings you joy. And when you're making it for pleasure and for leisure, the joy is right there. You don't want to lose that joy when you make the transition to become a professional working artist. It won't all be smooth sailing. It'll all be challenges, but you want to be able to create from that place of authenticity, from that place that gives you joy and inspiration so that you can put that in your work and share that with other people. So these are the eight things you need to consider when stepping out into that space, taking yourself seriously as an artist, watching the words that come out of your mouth, finding that routine and the flow in your creativity, finding your focus and making wise decisions, guarding your energy, and then finding how you're going to invest your time, your money, your resources, how you're going to educate yourself so that you can grow as an entrepreneur, as an artist, and then managing your expectations. So there's a lot to consider when you're starting out on your own and are ready to make the transition, but it's absolutely doable. So don't be overwhelmed. It's wise to take small steps. There's no real formula to make the transition from moving from a hobby to a professional working artist. You need to find your own way. You need to work on those areas where you need to grow and to develop. This episode comes with a checklist. The questions in the checklist will help you assess the areas you need to focus on to make that transition to become a better working artist. You can download the checklist on www.sonyasmallhere.com forward slash working artist checklist. If you want to take even bolder steps, then don't forget to sign up for my free masterclass, Craft an Art Career You Love. That's all for this week. If you don't want to miss an episode, then you can subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening to this episode and leave a review as this will make the podcast more visible and easier for other artists to find it. Thanks for that. Have an amazing week and I look forward to connecting with you next time. Until then...